Hello and welcome to another episode of Handloader TV with me, your host, Jeremiah. And in this episode, we're going to be taking an in-depth look at the 7mm PRC cartridge and this HS Precision rifle that we have before us. And it should look familiar to you guys if you've subscribed to Rifle Magazine as this rifle was on the cover. And Lane Simpson did a great article on the 7mm PRC and this rifle in particular. And he shot a lot of group sizes and did a lot of testing with powders and different bullets. And we're going to do the same in this episode. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get started by taking a look at the rifle itself and HS Precision as a company. So when it comes to HS Precision, they're a pretty interesting company and they weren't really that well known, but they were actually founded in Prescott, Arizona in 1978 and they were making rifles start to finish in-house and are still doing that to this day. Eventually though they moved up to South Dakota and moved all the machines and everything up there. They rapidly outgrew their place in Prescott and the rifle that really put them on the map and on the radar was their HTRs or heavy tactical rifles and that's what this is right here that we have before us. It's their heavy tactical precision rifle and it is heavy and it, I don't know about tactical but it's very precise. Um, at this point in time, I should let you know, I've shot about 200 rounds through it of all factory ammunition, mostly because I needed the brass in order to hand load for the cartridge. But I've put a lot of ammo through the rifle thus far, had a lot of time behind it. It's very comfortable, it's extremely accurate, and I was able to get some really good groups, of course, unfortunately, off camera uh, with the Hornady ELDMs and the Hornady ELDX bullets factory loaded in their match ammunition and their precision hunter ammunition. So let's go ahead and take a closer look and talk about the nuts and bolts of this particular rifle that we'll be using for testing out the 7PRC. Starting at the back we have a nice recoil pad here, fit and finish is pretty good. It is adjustable by simply turning this wheel for length of pull which is really nice and very easy to do. And we also have a sling stud back here and an adjustable cheek riser that can be moved up or down using this knob right here. An HS Precision stock with an aluminum bedding block inside of here and a large bolt handle. They call this their tactical bolt handle. That bolt runs super smooth and clean through the raceway there and if you want to release it the release is on the left side here and of course you have to make sure that this cheek riser is low enough to remove that bolt in easy operation it has two locking lugs on the bolt and in testing this they make full contact a lot of these two lug rifles I've seen where only a single lug will make contact but this one both lugs make very nice contact and it just feels really nice and smooth. We have a Trigger Tech trigger inside here and it is adjustable from 4 to 32 ounces and on an average of 5 pulls on a Wheeler Engineering trigger pull gauge that I have here, their digital model. I measured this rifle's trigger pull at 11.5 ounces. It's very crisp, very clean, and of course the rifle's clear here. But, go ahead and show you that. Very light, very crisp, very little to no over travel, no creep, a very nice trigger. And really what this rifle is set up for is competitive shooting, ELR type matches, that sort of thing. So having that light trigger can be a big advantage and very helpful when you're shooting those types of matches. Not maybe necessarily ideal for hunting, but that's not what this rifle was designed for. It weighs in at a whopping 20.5 pounds in its current configuration as seen here. Now we have a detachable box magazine, which can be released by pushing on the inside of the trigger guard here. The magazine holds seven rounds, and thus far my only complaint with this whole rifle and cartridge and everything as set up is the magazine can be a little bit tricky to load, in particular getting past the shoulder of the next loaded round. The first one loads very easy, very nicely, 
but then in order to get past the shoulder, you kind of got to squeeze your fingers in there and it can get a little bit tricky to load, but to quote Lane Simpson in his article, maybe I just need to do some more strength training, exercise my fingers a little bit. And moving right along, we have the heart of the rifle, which is the HS Precision Action. Again, it is made in-house. They true everything up, do a really good job of precision machining everything so that everything's in alignment, trued, and the tolerances are very tight. Then we have on the front end here, a Picatinny rail, and we have an Atlas bipod attached to it here. There is also a sling swivel here, if so desired. And we have a 30 inch barrel, one and eight twist. So this is a long, heavy contoured barrel, which will be kind of nice for shooting groups. It won't heat up too quickly on us. It'll probably take a little bit longer to cool, but uh, that's a decent trade off in my book. And then to top it all off, we have a Collis uh, 624i, six to 24 by 56 scope. It is in mill radians and it has a matching reticle in mills for holding off for wind if so desired. We also have a little bubble level here to make sure that the rifle is not canted on us. Now as I said earlier, I have about 200 rounds through this particular system and its current configuration. And overall, it's been very pleasant to shoot. Since the rifle does weigh 20.5 pounds, the recoil on it is extremely manageable and I'm actually able to look through the scope and at 100 yards shooting groups on paper, I can see my impact and see the splash of the bullet behind it. Of course, that's due entirely to a good bench setup and the weight of the rifle. Hornady, I think with a 175 grain ELDX, uh, rates the recoil at around 23 pounds with the 7 millimeter PRC. So now let's go ahead and jump over to the cartridge itself and we'll walk you through what we did to develop hand loads in this particular rifle. When it comes to hand loading for the 7mm PRC, there are a few things that I want to point out. It is relatively straightforward and a very simple process. However, when it comes to sourcing your data, make sure you use a reputable data source. In preparing for this video, I went ahead and checked with a few people I know who have had hands-on experience with the 7mm PRC. I talked with the folks over at Hornady, got some information from them, some pressure tested data, and I also read Lane's article in Rifle Magazine. He had some hand loads in there. And using this data, I was able to extrapolate with a few different types of bullets, a few different powders, but use extreme caution because when I was on the internet and running a few searches on the seven millimeter PRC, I saw some pretty wild and crazy powder charge weights. In some cases, they were six grains over maximum. And in some cases, they were getting two to 300 feet per second higher velocity than what was maximum. And keep in mind, while it may not be 100%, but 99% of the time, pressure equals velocity. So if you're 200 feet per second above max, chances are you're over pressure, and usually by a significant amount. Now, we should have some relatively high velocities because we're using a 30-inch barrel, but most of your pressure-tested data is using a 24 or 26-inch barrel. So something to keep in mind and an important note to take when you're trying to figure out what powder and bullet combination you want to use and hand load for your rifle. So on that note, we have our components laid out before you. We've selected Redding dies for this test. We've got some high quality, heavy, high BC bullets. I specifically selected these because they're some of the heaviest seven millimeter bullets I could find and they have the highest ballistic coefficients. And that's really where this rifle shines with the one in eight twist. It's really what it was designed for. I also have a few of my favorite powders for Magnum cartridges. I've had really good results with these powders in similar cartridges to the 7PRC, and I think we'll get some good results. Now, rather than walk you through step-by-step step each process of the loading process, I'm going to go ahead and give you a little bit of a high level overview of what I did in order to develop these hand loads. So starting out, we used Hornady cases and unfortunately I had to fire a lot of factory ammunition in order to get these cases. But I've got the cases, they're Hornady 
And what I went ahead and did is use the neck sizing die from Redding. I like to put just a little bit of case lube on the case. This is Hornady Unique Case Lube. I like to put a little bit around the neck because I am just neck sizing. And I know there's a lot of controversy over neck sizing and all that, but this was factory ammunition. It was within SAMI spec, and I happen to know that if I neck size this brass, it still hasn't fully expanded to the chamber dimensions. And as a result, the neck sized brass will pop in to the chamber just fine, and the bolt will close very easily. No resistance there whatsoever. I'll pick that up later. So, go ahead, size a few cases. And then once the case has been fired once or maybe even twice, what I'll go ahead and do is full length size, but I'll adjust the die so that I'm only bumping the shoulder of the case about two thousandths of an inch. And Hornady makes tools to check that. Sinclair makes tools to check that. Widden Gunworks makes a really nice bump gauge. And you'll hear that often referred to as bumping the shoulder by a set amount. One thousandth, two thousandth, three thousandths of an inch, so on and so forth. This is pretty common practice when it comes to precision reloading. And it's really not that hard to do with the 7mm PRC. It's pretty much like any other bottleneck cartridge. So from there, once the cases were sized, and of course they were cleaned in a vibratory tumbler with a little case polish before I even started the sizing process, you can see the cases are nice and shiny, very clean. Ran them through the neck sizing die. The next step was to go ahead and chamfer and deburr the case mouths. Uh, uniform, my primer pockets, and then I would go ahead and prime each case using a Frankfurt Arsenal hand primer. Then from there, once the cases were primed, powder charges were dispensed on an RCBS Matchmaster. They were accurate to four hundredths of a grain. And then it was time to go ahead and seat some bullets. So that's a relatively simple operation, especially using the micrometer seating stem. Place the bullet in there, run it up into the die. I'd take a measurement with my calipers, and then I'd just count down. I need to go down 50 thousandths, so 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 thousandths. I'd go ahead and seat that bullet. And there we have a loaded dummy round in this case, but that's the exact process I used to go ahead and load all of the ammunition that you'll see us test in this particular rifle. And as always, if you have any questions, be sure to leave them in the comments below. I've already preloaded the ammunition for this test as we're in a bit of a time crunch to get this all done and get this rifle back to HS Precision. It is on loan from them, and we're grateful for them for sending us this rifle in this brand new cartridge. So on that note, before we hit the range, one other thing I should mention is all the loads that we're going to test today will be on our website, loaddata.com. You'll be able to search 7mm PRC, hit the enter button, it'll take you there to a page with all of our 7mm PRC data, and just look for the handloader TV loads, and click on that and you'll get the good, the bad, and the ugly, all the groups that we shot using this particular rifle. And you'll be able to see the velocities, the powders we use, the bullets we use, the group sizes. The only thing you won't be able to see is the powder charge weight. We reserve that for subscribers. And if you so choose to subscribe to loaddata.com, you get access to all those powder charges so you can try and replicate our results. It's also a great way to support the channel. So without further ado, let's pray for a nice winter day and we'll go ahead and hit the range. So we're at the range now. We have the HS Precision Rifle benched in here, settled in. Chronograph is 10 feet from the muzzle. It's an Ailer Model 35P. Target is downrange at 100 yards. And as far as environmental conditions, we're dealing with a very slight breeze, if any, zero to about four miles an hour, coming from about the five o'clock position, according to the Kestrel 5700 here. 
The temperature is 59 degrees Fahrenheit, altitude's 5,000 feet. Humidity is 22% and pressure is 25.07. And we're having some shade encroach upon our firing position because it's the winter time and it's difficult to find good days like this to shoot. We have some factory ammo and hand loads. We're gonna put them to the test now. So first up, we're gonna try using some factory ammunition here. This is the Hornady Precision Hunter ammunition using a 175 grain Hornady ELDX bullet going at about 3,000 feet per second. It'll be interesting to see what it does out of this 30 inch barrel. And because we've kind of run out of daylight and the ailer is having a little bit of trouble with the winter sun that's casting a long shadow right now. So we also have the lab radar set up here for backup. Let's go ahead and see how it groups on the paper. So for the first load that we're going to try, when it comes to our hand loads, is using Hodgdon Rotumbo powder, a 64 grain charge with 197 grain Sierra hollow point boat tail or match king bullet. Hornady cases, Federal 215M primers and our overall loaded length is 3.2800 inches, very close to the lands. That's one thing I noticed about this rifle, it does have a little bit of a short if you can say that, a short throat. So a lot of these long, heavy bullets will be seated a little bit deeper than what I'd prefer. But as always, the proof is in the pudding. Let's see what it does on paper at 100 yards.
The next load that we're going to go ahead and try is using Alliant Reloader 25 powder, a 67 grain charge with a 195 grain Burger Extreme Outer Limits or EOL bullet. Hornady Cases Federal 215M primers and our overall loaded length is 3.2700 inches. This is a big, long, sleek projectile that really had its claim to fame in the 28 Nosler. So I'm really curious to see how it does out of this 7 millimeter PRC. So this is another day on the range, and unfortunately it's not nearly as nice of weather as we had previously. Um, we didn't get to test nearly as many loads as we'd like. And currently, according to the Kestrel 5700, our current weather conditions are sustained winds of 10 to 15 miles per hour with gusts up to 20 miles per hour. The temperature is 50 degrees Fahrenheit, humidity is 22%, and pressure is 24.95 in HG. We got a winter storm rolling in, and we're just on a bit of a time crunch with this rifle, so unfortunately we can't wait for better conditions. It's one of those it is what it is kind of situations. So for the next load, we've swapped over to H1000 powder, a 63.5 grain charge with a 190 grain Hornady A-tip bullet. Hornady cases, Federal 215M primers, and our overall loaded length is 3.375 inches. Target's good, wind is choppy still, but nothing we can do about that.
Oh. No pressure. Rounding out our load development, we swapped over to Alliant Reloader 26 powder, a 65 grain charge with a 175 grain Hornady LDX bullet. Hornady cases, Federal 215M primers, and our overall loaded length is 3.300 inches. These shot pretty well from the factory, so it'll be interesting to compare and contrast these bullets, hand loaded versus factory loaded. And depending on how that goes, could be either humbling for the hand loader, which would be me, or humbling for the factory ammunition. I will say the factory ammunition has set the bar rather high. Here we go. So as you can see, we're back at the bench now. And before I dive into the target results, there's a caveat that I wanna throw into this as we go through and review these targets. While we were shooting, it got progressively worse and worse and worse in terms of weather conditions. And unfortunately, we were pressed for time. We just couldn't wait for the perfect day to take this rifle out and shoot. And that happens sometimes in your real world testing. And Sometimes by the end of the day, the wind was blowing in an excess of 20 miles per hour, which really is not conducive to accuracy. And it definitely opened up some of our groups and induced some flyers here and there. And as far as me as a shooter, I kind of know my limits. Um, I'm not an expert bench rest shooter. This rifle is very accurate, and this is one of the few instances where I can, I can say with certainty that the rifle is more accurate than I am. So that's a real testament to the performance of the rifle. And keep in mind, a lot of these groups that we shot were in 15, 20, possibly even 25 mile per hour winds. So let's go ahead and take a look at the first result we have here using Hornady Precision Hunter ammunition using a 175 grain Hornady ELDX. We get a standard deviation of nine, extreme spread of 28, for an average velocity of 3,067 feet per second from this 30 inch barrel. And the group size measured out to right about half an inch. So really good results from factory loaded ammunition. Uh, these rifles are all guaranteed to shoot half minute of angle or better, and I have no doubt that if it was a calm day, we would have got even better results. The next load we went ahead and tried is hand loads here from moving on. We used Hodgdon Rotumbo powder, a start charge of around 64 grains, and this produced a velocity of around 2,785 feet per second using the Sierra hollow point boat tail 197 grain bullet. This thing is a real, I mean, it looks like a javelin. It's just a very impressive bullet, very high BC, got a standard deviation of 11, and that grouped into 0.59 inches. Not gonna complain about that um, at all, given our weather conditions. I have no doubt, again, it could have been better if there was no wind. That's the one thing that really throws off your group shooting. And when you're talking group sizes that are under half an inch, it, the wind really starts to become a factor, even at shorter ranges. 
In the next load, we used Alliant Reloader 25. I was expecting very impressive velocity results out of this powder, and it performed. We got a group size of 0.63 inches using a 195 grain burger EOL. And if you remove that one flyer in the center of the target, that group size shrinks down to 0.32 inches. And I really think that is the capability of this rifle. I think this rifle is capable of delivering group sizes that are under half an inch. And if you check out Lane Simpson's article, he did a lot of accuracy testing with this rifle, shot a lot of groups. And overall, his groups were very, very small groups and fairly large sample sizes. So that tells you a lot. The next load, we tried H1000 powder, got really good results across the board with this powder and bullet combination, the 190 grain Hornady A-tip bullet, standard deviation of 5, extreme spread of 15, and respectable velocity at 2841 there, and this grouped into 0.35 inches, and I actually remember shooting this group, and I was watching the wind flags, and it was just perfectly consistent from the first shot to the last shot. It was really hard not to jump the gun and get ahead of myself and try and shoot under the, the same wind conditions, shoot them too quickly and send a flyer. So really good accuracy with the Hornady A-tip. The final load we have here to review is using the 175 grain Hornady ELDX and Reloader 26 powder. This really duplicates the factory ammunition perfectly with an average velocity of 3,061 feet per second. Slightly better standard deviation and extreme spreads, probably because of the extra time and care that was spent hand loading this ammunition. But overall, very comparable to the results we got with the Hornady Precision Hunter ammunition. And it's a testament to how well and what a good job Hornady is doing loading their factory ammo. I was uh, very impressed with the results here. They grouped into 0.68 inches. So overall, I think the rifle definitely could have performed better if given the opportunity. We were just fighting the environment, the wind conditions, and that made it a little bit tough to shoot really nice small groups. In the future, this is something I'd love to revisit if at all possible, and give it another whirl and see what this rifle is really capable of. And honestly, what I'm capable of as a shooter, trying to shoot into the .1s and .2s all day across 100 rounds is pretty hard. I can do .3s and .4s pretty consistent, but when you start getting into those .1s and .2s, it's hard to hold a group. So on that note, let's go ahead and close out with a few final thoughts on the rifle and the cartridge itself. So the first thing that I would like to talk about in closing is the cartridge itself, the 7mm PRC. Now, at the time of this filming, there's not a whole lot of data, but I was able to gather together some ballistic drop tables using the loads that I shot, calculating out the velocities and looking at some other velocities from 24-inch barrels and stuff like that. And as a whole, I was pretty impressed with the ballistic performance of a 7mm PRC. It is capable with its 1 in 8 twist rate of launching these heavy high BC bullets, most of them pushing 200 grains in weight at over 2,900 feet per second, which is very, very impressive to me. The 175 grain factory offering is going at 3,000 feet per second. So utilizing those high BC bullets, it's a great cartridge for long range shooting. And I think this is a trend that we're going to see a little bit. For a while, the 6.5s were all the rage. A lot of talk about that heavy high BC bullets. We've seen Berger introduce things like the 156 uh, long range bullet from them. And I think seven millimeter seems like a great option, especially for those North American big game hunters who want something with a little bit flatter trajectory to reach out, extend their ranges, and of course, increase their terminal performance on game, utilizing these heavier bullets. Overall, I was very impressed with the performance we got from the 7mm PRC. Hand loading it was a very simple and easy operation. We were able to get really good results with our hand loads and even with the factory loaded ammunition. So as a whole, I'm very impressed with the 7mm PRC. And I think that 
a lot of my experience with this stems directly from this rifle. We had a test platform that was you know, reliable and precise enough to test the accuracy of the cartridge and the bullets and things of those nature. And overall, the rifle performed very well. We had zero hiccups with it. It functioned, fed, it was just 100% reliable, which you expect out of a bolt action. Um, one nice thing is a lot of times what I'll run into is magazine length issues and magazine length restrictions. This magazine is capable of accepting a cartridge overall loaded length up to 3.700 inches. Now I never even came close to that because if I loaded my bullets that long, they would be hard jammed into the rifling in this particular rifle. So I ha didn't have to worry about magazine length restrictions at all, which was really nice. It allowed me to seat my bullets out longer, increase powder capacity, especially with these longer, heavier, higher BC bullets. And overall, the rifle proved itself as being capable of accuracy, probably more accurate than I am. And that's a little bit humbling, but just encourages me to go out there and spend some more time practicing and shooting and refining those bench rest techniques. Um, it was comfortable to shoot and the one thing that I don't want to touch on is recoil. Um, this is a 20 pound rifle. The recoil was very very manageable. It was easy for me to spot my misses and hits through the scope um, but a large part of that is due to the weight of the rifle. So in, if you have a 20 pound rifle, the recoil is very manageable, very easy to control. But if you have a light 10, eight, seven pound rifle, I have no idea what the recoil is gonna feel like and if you'll be able to spot misses and stuff like that. I have a feeling you wouldn't, but that's something I, I really don't wanna touch on too heavily because simply the platform I use to test in. The scope performed very well. The Collis 624i is a very nice scope. Very nice, precise parallax adjustment. Um, it tracked and performed flawlessly. I was doing some shooting out to 400 yards when I was shooting the factory ammunition through it. I was able to get consistent and repeatable results on a one MOA sized steel plate. So that is a testament to the accuracy of the rifle in and of itself. So overall, those are my personal thoughts with the 7mm PRC, but as always, we've shown you the results. We showed you exactly what we got and the conditions we were testing under. Now you can make an educated decision for yourself. You can see those real-world velocities, the real loads that were tested, and the real bullets that we used, and make an educated and informed decision on the 7mm PRC and the HS Precision Rifle we used to test it in. If you stuck around this far, thank you so much. We really do appreciate it. We apologize that this episode was a little bit rushed and we didn't get to spend quite as much time as we normally do testing, but we appreciate it. As always, if you liked what you saw, be sure to give us a thumbs up and let us know. And don't forget to hit the subscribe button along with the bell icon so you're notified when we post our next video. We've got a lot of exciting projects in the works and you don't want to miss out. And last but not least, if you have any personal experience, thoughts, questions, concerns, be sure to leave those in the comments section below. I do my best to read and respond to every one of those. It's getting a little bit difficult with the amount of subscribers and viewership we have, but that's a wonderful thing and we appreciate it. We will catch you guys in the next episode. <laughs>